So in this video we're just going to practice doing some solving of equations. Now for this you need to remember that complex roots come as conjugate pairs. This comes from the plus or minus part of the um, quadratic formula, giving you, you know, something like 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i would be your um, pair of complex roots. Okay, so we can um, also solve higher order polynomials than quadratics, so we'll have a look at uh, an example of that. So we're going to solve this cubic here. Now the first thing we need to do is find one of the easier roots. Um, we can't just jump straight into solving that cubic since you only really know how to solve quadratics at the moment. But you have come across something before that helps you solve higher order polynomials and that's the factor and remainder theorem. So the factor theorem says that if we call this P, P of X for our polynomial, then we substitute in some values and see what will give us the answer of zero. So if you put in a zero, that quite obviously comes to 26. If you do P of one, that's equal to 22. P of minus one is 20. And we're just sort of testing out some values in order. P of two is 20. So then the next one to try would be P of minus two. That one does come to zero. So when you're trying out these values, you want to pick things that are factors of that last number 26 and you would try the positive and the negative ones of those. You've had practice of those before though. So since p of minus two is equal to zero, then x equals minus two is a root of that um, equation at the top. That means that x plus two is a factor of p of x. So if we divide it into p of x, we'll get what the rest of it would be. So this is our algebraic long division, remember. You can do it by equating coefficients. Um, I'll do that on the next example, so you've got uh, a bit of a, a reminder of both. But if we carry on this long division, it looks like this. So we need a minus 6x times by the x plus 2. Put that down at the bottom, subtract it, bring down the next number. So then we need a 13 to make the 13x, and then that gives us the remainder of 0. So we have our other factor is uh, the x squared minus 6x plus 13. So with that one, we now need to solve that quadratic to get the other two roots. So using the quadratic formula, it looks like this. So we get 3 plus or minus 2i. So all of our roots are minus 2, 3 plus 2i, and 3 minus 2i. Okay, this one, um, we're given a polynomial. We're told that minus four plus four i is a root of that polynomial equal to zero, and we want to find the other roots. So here we have a polynomial of order four. So we have um, minus four plus four i as one of the roots, which means we can straight away write down one of the other roots, which is the conjugate. Okay, now we are looking for factors of p of x. So that would be x minus each of the two roots that we know. We know that they are factors. So if you multiply that out, it looks like this. Okay, and we get x squared plus 8x plus 32. So we need to find the, the other part that multiplies with it to make our polynomial. So this, this one I'm going to do by equating coefficients. You can do it by algebraic long division again, but I'll just give you a reminder of equating coefficients as well. So first of all, you can spot straight away that if we look at the x to the 4 term, we'd have a equals 1. We've just got x to the 4 on the left-hand side, so a x to the 4 on the right-hand side would give us that a, a is 1. Um, just a note, in, in that bracket there where I've got ax squared plus bx plus c, we've chosen that that needs to be a quadratic so that when it multiplies out you get something to the power of 4. Okay, now looking at the constant terms because that's the next easiest thing to do. On the left we have 96 and on the right we get 32c once that was, would be multiplied out. So c is 3. And then the next easiest thing to look at is the x terms. So on the left we have minus 104, and on the right you would get 8c plus 32b. And that gives us b is minus 4. So our quadratic there, if we put those values in, would be x squared minus 4x plus 3. So now we go and factorise that one. This one, as you'd expect, um, factorises into real roots. Since we've got two complex roots there, it's likely these ones are going to be the real ones. So x 
um, all of our roots are minus 4 plus 4i, minus 4 minus 4i, and then the two real roots we just found of 3 and 1. Okay, find the square roots of 8i. So there is some complex number where if you square it, you get 8i. So we multiply out that bracket, set it equal to 8i, just tidy it up a little bit. And then we can equate the real and the imaginary parts. And then rearrange that imaginary part into y equals 4 over x. Substitute it into the real, the, the equation we got from the real parts. And then go ahead and uh, finish that off. So x to the 4 would be 16. So x is plus or minus 2. Now when x is 2, y is 2. And when x is minus 2, y is also minus 2. So we get that the square root of 8i can be 2 plus 2i or minus 2 minus 2i.